Yo, what is up guys, and welcome back to another video. And I'm sure you still remember the times when the KD4 used to be the like like the most OP plane in the game. It, it climbed like a like a P47N while having the best sustained turn rate of all planes in the game at the same time. Having an awesome weaponry, having a really good energy retention, and you know almost being just undefeatable. All the planes that had a better initial turn than the KD4 were slower than the KD4 and also had a worse sustain turn rate. And every plane that uh, had a good sustain turn rate and was fast just had a much, much worse uh, initial turn. So the KD4 was basically undefeatable unless you had a wingman. And the 84 was not very good. That was legit the only times you could defeat it. Um, but now it's been nerfed. And you might think, hey, the world is good again, but, you know, unfortunately it's not. <laughs> because this game, for some reason, only seems to know, like, extremes. Like, either the planes are incredibly OP, and almost undefeatable, in the Yak 9 or, uh, they get nerfed to shit, so, that they are even much worse than they're actually, you know, than they actually should be. K84. So, that's what we're gonna talk about today. And uh, I'm gonna show you why the nerf of the K4 may have balanced out the game, but didn't change anything of the fact that, uh, you know, that it's still just wrong. And I will also show you which plane is actually the most OP plane in the game right now, and why this plane should receive a nerf, although, it's, you know, as we know already, once fan is gonna start nerfing it, it will probably be some stupid BS and it will probably be like a lot worse than it was actually in real life and, uh, you know, may actually balance out the game again, but, uh, you know, won't make the game more realistic, you know, as we've all seen it before with the KD4, but, you know, never stop hoping, <laughs> so I'm still make this video, uh, show you guys what's wrong with these planes and you know, maybe something gonna change one day. It's it's always you know it's always worth trying. So I hope you enjoyed this video and let's go straight into it. To understand what's wrong with the KD4 in this game, you need to understand what the KD4 was in real life. The fastest fighter the Imperial Japanese Army ever had. That means that the KD4 Hayata had a top speed of 580 kilometers per hour at 3,000 meters of altitude. However, in this game, the K84 won't exceed 450 kilometers per hour, no matter what altitude it's flying at. Additionally, the developer gave this plane things it never had in real life, such as a 2,500 horsepower engine, which le never left the drawing board and four 20mm cannons, which were never put into series either. These inaccuracies result in the BS we currently have in the game, with P40s being just as fast as KD4s, or F65 Falcats being able to outrun KD4s, which was never possible in real life. Also, due to the lack of modeled high altitude performance, P-47s are able to outrun KD-4s at low altitudes, while P-47s do not clearly outperform the KD-4 at higher altitudes, which is also BS. And although adding high altitude performance and the effect of superchargers plus supercharger gears into this game would be hard work and take its time, Simply patching the KD4 speed and buffing it by around 120 km really wouldn't be that hard to do and could be done within one simple update. So why isn't it happening? Answering this question is quite simple. Fixing the performance of existing aircraft doesn't bring you any money, while modeling new aircraft you can sell does. So even if the developer is aware of the inaccuracies, fixing them simply isn't in his favor. Therefore, aircraft in this game usually don't get fixed 
unless they are so OP that they completely break the game. And that straight up brings us to the actual point why I'm making this video and which plane in my opinion is the most OP plane in this game as of right now. Other than the KD-4, the P-47 N was never designed as a true air superiority fighter. Instead, it was developed as an escort fighter in order to escort bombers for the invasion of Japan. For that reason, Republic fit a lot of fuel tanks into that aircraft in order to give it a good range. Obviously, that made it very heavy. In fact, it had an impressive weight of 9 tons. This increase in weight decreased the climbing performance by a lot. Realistically, the P-47N had an average climb of 1760 feet per minute. As you can read off this table, if you calculate the time it takes to climb to 25,000 feet down to one minute. The game, however, seems to be pretty much unaffected by this and gives the P-47N a sustained climbing performance of around 6,000 feet per minute without payload and 4,000 feet per minute with payload. That is more than three times better than it's supposed to be. With the P-47 and overperforming by so much, the K-84 underperforming by a lot, and the P-38 and the F4U having such a bad flight model with both being too fast and too unmaneuverable, the new Guinea map just isn't a lot of fun as of right now. This also explains why this map is currently highly inactive as nobody wants to fly the underperforming Japanese planes against the overperforming American planes. Fixing these problems would give the game both more realism and more balance and therefore more activity on the New Guinea map. Unfortunately, these inaccuracies aren't going to change anytime soon for the reasons I explained earlier in this video. Despite the fact that the K84 is currently underperforming by a lot as I explained earlier, I still got some decent footage with it and I actually have to find a good New Guinea realistic match. So, I'm gonna just show you off that footage and wrap this video up with it. So, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in the next one.